Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I am going to bring my habitation module down to the surface of the moon and try to join it up with the colony control center. But first I wanted to check out what fine print does to our contracts. I haven't actually taken a look at this before. And let's see, we've got chart source of data anomaly near site 7 r o Five, nine on Minmus with a rover. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know, uh, maybe we should focus on the moon, but we don't seem to have anything for the moon. How long is this going to be? It's, it gives us three years. That's a long time. I'll pick that up. It seems to drive by Alpha site, drive by Beta site, drive by Gamma site, and then uh, 60 science after all that. So that's worth 120 science. And that's more of what I'm paying attention to. These days, I've, I've come to figure out that, really, uh, I'll get the funds some way or another. Uh, the science is much more interesting to focus on. Uh, okay, um, perform aerial surveys of Kerbin and altitude between those altitudes. Uh, flying over specific sites, that's very interesting. We saw those sites in the previous episode on the map. And, uh, hmm... I wonder how close we have to get to those sites. I mean, when you talk about flying over them, are they little points or are they sort of areas that we have to fly over? Um, well, uh, we'll try that out at some point. Uh, build a new orbital station around Duna. 500 science. Okay, put your station in orbit around Duna. Build a station that has power, an antenna, and a docking port. Have a facility supporting at least six Kerbals. Neutralized controls for 10 seconds. Well, that's an interesting one. I I I trust that can be done. Um, all right. Uh, yes, we can do that too. Um, chart source of anomaly with a rover. Wow, that's worth a lot, isn't it? Uh, five sites too. Okay. Um, perform aerial surveys of Duna and altitude. That's that's a very low altitude, isn't it? At some places, that would actually be underground. Um, oh, heck, why not? Bring a newly discovered Class E asteroid into orbit around EVE. <laughs> well, I can, <clears throat> I can see why that's worth quite a lot, huh? That's millions and millions and, you know, uh, tech tree finishing amounts of science. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm not even going to try a Class C around Ike. Let's let's do one around Kerbin first, people. Uh, position satellite in a specific orbit of Kerbin. Well, that's a pretty high orbit, isn't it? That's actually not a very useful orbit. That's practically the moon. Yeah, that's a little bit weird. Of course, not quite as weird as testing the ion engine on escape trajectory around Minmus. Okay, so I think we'll go with those contracts. We've also got an Explore Duna contract, which is convenient considering we've uh, we've got all these other Duna things going on. Uh, aerial surveys of Kerbin. Interesting. I think I know just the plane for that. I've, uh, of course, this is a .25 series, but in my stock .25 series, I've got a neat little plane, uh, a space plane that uh, I don't mind porting in over here to do basic science over Kerbin as well. So maybe I'll do that. I think uh, we could get more mileage out of that plane. Okay, uh, but first let's get the let's get the Kerbitat down to the surface of the moon. Okay, so here we are with the Kerbitat and John Gas Kerman. Must remember that we do have a Kerbal on board and so I have to be extra careful. Okay, uh, I decided to bring the orbit in at periapsis, safest thing to do so that we don't crash into the planet since our periapsis is already pretty low. And that will give us an intersect point with a gap of 1.1 kilometers. So let's head for periapsis and do that. Okay, here we go. We're gonna need to retroburn to match speeds with the target. Where is the target? There it is. 
Well, you can probably close in. Well, no, it looks like closest approach distance is about 200 from this side. I think uh, the pumpkin will have to do the fine tuning. It's got the RCS fuel. Hope it has enough. We don't have any RCS fuel on this. Let's go check. Uh, yeah, it's got plenty of mod propellant. Okay, so. Target that. Want to control from here. Okay, looks like we're all lined up. Okay, below 100 meters, closing in on the target at a pretty good clip. I'll have to slow down soon. Okay, uh, say us. All right, two meters. We have contact. Whoa. Up, up, up. Doesn't look like it's uh, really magnetizing here. Okay, there we go. Alright, now docked with John Gaskerman and his, his Kerbatat. We will transfer fuel to the orange, not the orange, the pumpkin. Okay, and we've got some more fuel in here. Got a little bit more than we actually need for the pumpkin, so there's going to be some spare left in the tank. Can't do anything about that. But that's enough. We will decouple now. Okay. And I want to control from up here. No, not the vertical stack winch. There we go. Right. Okay. And now our target is our base. Not Rover Alpha. Rover Alpha is not quite in the right place. There we go. Set us target. We seem to be over here, which is pretty good. We can change our inclination now, I think. What's the actual latitude of that location? It's only 8, but uh, to hit it we need a higher inclination. That looks pretty good. Okay. I'll do a separate retro burn here. The pumpkin is not spinning at all, so that's, that's all good. Okay, I don't want that to be doing... Oh, now it's spinning, but I don't even have SAS on. Okay, that seems like a reasonable approach. Let's put the landing gear down. Not the... Not the airplane landing gear that we use to roll these things around. We want these. Nah. Uh, deploy, is that right? Okay, yeah. So we want to retract that landing gear. There we go. Descending through 30 kilometers and still looking good. Obviously, I have to be very careful with this because John Gaskerman is inside, but we won't find out his fate until we get the pumpkin back into orbit and then turn back to him. Hopefully, it'll be all right. Should just make sure brakes are on. Hopefully, that'll stabilize him. I mean, of course, he's not going to be on his wheels, but still. Up, oh, we're getting within render distance. Okay, there we go. Well, our light tower is certainly quite a beacon from from this view. Hmm, interesting light effect because now we're not only rendering the 
light from the light tower but also the it's struggling to render the pumpkins own lights and as a result it really doesn't want to do that to any precision and that's why we're getting this sort of uh, angular sort of lighting effect Okay, and uh, no, 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 no. Undock. Oh, uh, close whatever that happened. Okay, uh, still on SAS. I don't know why SAS disengaged. Okay, well, it looks like the Curvitat's okay. Alright. Back to orbit. I don't know why SAS can't just put a little bit more roll into it. So you see here it's got uh, a quarter of the roll, maybe a third of the roll. And then I just put a little bit more roll and I can push it backwards. So it could stabilize the roll with the torque that it has, but I guess it just likes the idea of this particular craft spinning a little bit. Which I don't mind, it, it sort of has a pumpkin-esque kind of quality to it too. No, I'm not concerned about the spin, really. I'm just pointing out that it's doing it even though it has some leeway to kill the rotation. Oh, somebody mentioned kill rotation from Smart ESS, and that can do it. So you can see it's using the full amount of roll to uh, make sure that rotation is killed. So, yeah, we can do that, too. I'm just curious about why SAS can't do it. Okay, that's the pumpkin in orbit. Uh, average is 60 kilometers. Now, now let's go back to the surface and tug our modules around to get them in order. Okay, so here we are with the Colony Control Center, and I have to figure out which way around we are, and we want to tug it over to the lighting beacon, which you can see pretty clearly from here. Um, so, let's see, this way goes that way. What this? Okay, so sort of backwards, that's fine. Better take it slowly. We gotta be making some wide turns around here. Gotta limit to one meter per second. Better safe than sorry. These are expensive modules. And uh, nothing else on the moon is going anywhere, so we're not in any hurry. I don't know how these little uh, flexo tubes actually work. I'll have to take a look at that. There's there's a set of tubes that are Kerbal attachment system type tubes, and for that we'll have to have a Kerbal around here. We do have a Kerbal around here in the Kerbitat, so uh, he can help out. But I don't know if this is that kind of tube or a different kind of tube. There was a handy chart of all the, well not a chart, uh, a description of all the tubes on the website for the for the modular colonization system, but uh, I don't have that stored in my head, unfortunately. It would be very handy to store all that information in my, in my brain, but I have not done an extensive study of this mod just yet. Thanks to the fact that it's hooked up to this module, the tug actually has quite a lot of electric charge to make use of, even if it's in the dark. Doesn't have much by way of solar power, it's just got these little solar panels, not even extendable ones. But uh, each of the colony modules has plenty of electric charge to supply it with if, it ne if necessary. Now this is basically the front door of the colony. The other module is going to be coming in from this side, so may the way we're facing is not so bad. 
probably the best way to go. Uh, getting a wide view is very helpful. Oh, people always tell me to go into docking mode. Let me make people who tell me to go into docking mode happy. I'm going into docking mode to drive this thing. I've never, ever, ever seen that makes any difference, by the way. Uh, maybe I'm in this once. I'll take it back. Though that rover ended up having trouble anyway. Okay, I think that's sufficiently close. There we go, there we go. Uh, I guess it still thought that brakes were on. Um, and brakes should be on right now. Let's stop it. And I want to get the legs deployed here. Okay. And then the tricky part gear up. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't do that just yet though. Maybe I should just, because they're going to have to connect up. Yeah. Uh, I'll have gear down. You know what, I might never actually use these legs. It might be necessary to just keep them on the landing gear. Well, okay, anyway, back to this little guy. And we need to head out to the Kerbatat. Okay, we're sort of lined up. Let me park this. And, no, no, wow, that's... There we go. John Gas Kerman, brakes are on. Let's deploy landing gear. Very good, nice and smooth. I'll keep the little legs down just in case. <laughs> wow, this thing. I've got so many craft around that it's a little bit difficult to pick the right one. Okay, let's try and dock. It's a little bit of a slope, but not too much. Oh yeah, the landing legs actually get in the way, don't they? Let's see. Uh, yeah, let's let's jump back. No, not like that. Uh, okay, retract. This thing. If somebody knows what this is all about, please tell me, because it might be a problem going forward. Okay. So we want to go that away. And we want to have parking brakes off. Going with the slope makes it rather hard to turn. I'm actually basically applying brakes here. It's the slope that's actually moving us forward. John Gaskerman looks bemused by all of this. Gonna have to put him to work at some point. He seems a little bit too comfortable right now. Well, this isn't good. Just sort of waiting for the bottom of this pit, really. We can't really turn around very well in here. We're gonna end up on the opposite side of the colony control center than I was intending. The tug can't get all of its wheels on the ground because of the slope. Bit of a design flaw. 
Yeah, it's just totally off the ground. I don't suppose we can lower the wheelbase of these landing gears. Not without totally raising them. How the heck did we get the colony control center? We're going to have to have a definite landing site because um, obviously landing over there where we landed this Kerbatat is not a good place. Okay, uh, maybe RCS will help. Or not. Uh, oh, docking... why wouldn't docking mode let me use RCS? Oh, it is firing, it's just in the wrong direction. Uh, SAS... Maybe you shouldn't... Oh, SAS was causing the problem. Maybe. Hold on. Uh, oh, don't do that. Um, maybe SAS was saving us. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh -huh. Okay, docking mode again. Maybe you guys are right. Docking mode is important. Um, no, that's going the wrong way. Let's control from this docking port instead. Okay, that seems to be working better. Okay, finally we're going in the right direction. Phew. I do read your comments and I will remember to apply them eventually. Now, do the expandable tubes have to be like expandable tube connect connecting to another expandable tube? Flexo tube, of course. Oh, flexo tube and expandable tube are the same thing. Right. Anyway, um, I hope they were both flexo tubes. Uh, anyway, um, do they have to connect to each other, or do they connect to any random empty location? I don't know. I'm adding a little bit of RCS. We seem to be going pretty slow up this. So, just giving ourselves a little boost. It's actually downforce that we're adding, interestingly enough. Can't really go forward, I don't think. But downforce is good. We can use downforce. I really should have tested out connecting these modules together on Kerbin before doing this. A little bit more than I did. I don't think I did much of that. Can't remember. So I'm, I'm wondering about the functionality of these flexo tubes. And let's say I park it a little bit of a ways away. Park. Now I switch back over to this. What can I do with this? Can I get a Kerbal out? Hold on. Let's go this way. Ah, uh, new EVA on this side. Okay, good. Let's extend ladder. Oh, this side has the ladder. Well, that's somewhat inconvenient. At least it's the moon and not somewhere more drastic in terms of gravity. Oh, well, just let go of the ladder, why don't you? Okay, come on, get up, John Gas Kerman. See, can you grab this thing? Is this one of the grabbable ones? I don't even remember. Okay, yeah, grab. Oh, not like that. Okay, link. Okay, okay, okay.
open transfer GUI. Is that what I want? Or do I want the transfer GUI? Or do I want to transfer GUI? Uh, okay. It's open transfer too far away. Okay. No, that's not what I want. Maintenance resource transfer, no. But, uh, gauge dampener, no damage. No, 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 no. And maybe if we were in range of this one, it'll be able to connect, but, uh, whoa, whoa, don't knock the whole thing. What? 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 Back, back away, back. Oh, come on. Okay. All right. That pretty much. Oh wait. I thought escape meant that we could get away from this. Okay. Oh, it entered us. All right. Okay. So uh, maybe we'll need to turn this little guy around and link it to this side. But then we have a shortage of ports, don't we? We have the docking port here. We'll have to create. Oh no, we have an extra port here. Okay, uh, let's let's connect it to that one. Maybe that's a flexo tube as well. John Gas, get out of the way. You're sort of a menace, actually. Okay, this is not working out very well. Oh no! Oh no! 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 Come on! <sighs> Use that down force. Okay. Oh. We're, we're going way over. <laughs> I mean, I don't know where we're going. Uh, the slope is taking us to places unknown. Um, come on. Oh, no. We're going to have to create a bigger tug for these things. This one doesn't take slopes very well. Hmm, I'm having difficulty turning within the space that we've got. I'm using a lot of RCS propellant to make the attempt. Okay, and... Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh... -oh, uh, -oh, uh well, now you know why I put the RCS on. Oh, but come on. The problem with using the RCS over here is it actually makes the tug lighter, which does not actually... Uh, it, on the short term, it helps the downforce, but in the long term, it, it doesn't. So, there's a downside to that. Okay, we're we're sort of facing the right general direction, right? Right? I mean, it's not perfect, but uh, I'm running out of time here, honestly. Okay, come on, give me the little kerbal. Right. Let's see if he can make an attachment here. Come on, guys, please tell me this works like I think it does. Okay, whoa, 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 we've got a link. Phew, okay. That is the start of our colony. Uh, let's get, uh, let's get him back in, in the curvitat. And then we'll inflate up the, the inflatable hab module. Gram. And board. Okay, John Gas is in. Now, inflatable hab module. Deploy. Lights on. I don't know what that does, actually. Oh, it's got little lights inside. Okay. Flight lights on. I, I don't think we really need floodlights, but... 
Let's have lights on inside. Okay, activate command. I don't know what governor does, but it sounds good. Electric charge depleted, no way. I don't know what it says. Oh, well, that's construction, I guess. That's fine. That's different. Compost full, okay. Activate habitat. I don't know, I'm just going to activate everything, governor. Electric charge seems to be stable. Though that's only in the light. Once we're in the dark, maybe it'll be a little bit more tenuous. But uh, 20,000 electric charge units should be should be okay. I hope. It's producing punch cards. Punch cards are being produced. Does this produce anything right now? I can't see the bottom of it. Well, there's productivity. That's the important part. Okay, so this is the... The start of our base. I wonder. Uh, this is probably a bad thing. No, I, I'm not gonna try and move it with this. That's probably a bad idea altogether. I'm just try, trying to straighten out this tube. But hey, uh, we've got to this point. I think we can be satisfied that we've got a good thing going here. So everything else, we we'll have to land stuff uh, a little bit further away. But I'd rather have it up slope than down slope. I don't want to tug it all the way up. Perhaps we need to deploy a new tug. That's another thing. Okay, anyway, um, this has taken quite a while, so this is all I'm going to do in this episode. Uh, all of the maneuvering took a lot longer than it seemed to. And so we've gotten this together. It's a little meager sort of thing, but... Uh, we can look forward to building up on it and we've got another flex tube on this side so you can sort of see uh, well we'll find out I mean it, it probably needs some reconfiguring but probably I need to design a better tug for that uh, this guy has done a marvelous job but a little bit underwhelming alright so thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.